last Congress, the Judiciary Committee, and rather its Antitrust Subcommittee, headed by David Cicilline, conducted a monumental bipartisan investigation into the state of competition and digital services. The investigation spanned 16 months, culminating in a majority staff report that documented a range of problems affecting competition in the digital economy, and it made a series of recommendations to address these problems. The committee's extensive and meticulous report was a clarion call for action, and I'm proud to join my colleagues to answer that call through the introduction of this historic, bipartisan package of legislation to restore competition online. And I'm pleased to announce that I plan to bring, that I intend to bring these bills to a full committee markup next week. We expect to send out an official announcement by the end of this week, and we'll include the date and time of the market. These bills have paved the way for a stronger economy and a stronger democracy for the American people by reigning in the power of the most dominant firms online. Each bill is an essential part of a bipartisan plan to level the playing field for innovators, entrepreneurs, and startups. And the benefits of increased innovation and choice will flow directly to American consumers. With this package of legislation, the United States has the opportunity to take control of its own destiny, to be a global leader in developing rules of the road for the digital economy. Our goal should be to ensure that there is space for opportunity, innovation, and choice to thrive online for consumers and businesses alike. And that's exactly what these bills accomplish. I thank Chairman Cicilline and Ranking Member Buck for spearheading this partisan effort. I look forward to working together as we move these bills to the legislative process. And now I'm proud to introduce Chairman Cicilline. Good morning, and thank you, Chairman Nadler, and thank you to uh, Ranking Member Buck and all the members of the committee who have joined us today. As the Chairman mentioned, almost two years ago, the Antitrust Subcommittee opened what would become a 16-month-long investigation, a top-to-bottom review of the state of competition in the digital marketplace. This investigation included seven congressional hearings, the production of nearly 1.3 million internal documents and communications, submissions from 60 antitrust experts, and interviews with more than 240 market participants. Our final report, which the Judiciary Committee approved last month, found that Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google each hold monopoly power over significant sectors of the economy. These powerful corporations control access to key channels of distribution in the digital economy. And they use this control to maintain their own power by spying on rivals, copying products, and buying out competitors. And even right now, these modern day robber barons are growing their power through anti-competitive means. America is in a monopoly moment. There's a crisis of competition in digital, the digital marketplace. It is a crisis that impacts our entire society. And we see this crisis in small businesses that have designs for products stolen by Amazon, and developers forced to pay huge fees to sell an app on the iPhone, and websites and uh, owners have lost traffic to Google because it nearly unfairly advantages its own products, and in Facebook users whose privacy is violated routinely with no recourse or alternative in sight. This moment, this monopoly moment, is holding back our entire economy. We cannot unleash the full power of American ingenuity when everyday Americans are competing with one arm behind their back. And that is why today we are outlining our bipartisan agenda for a stronger online economy with opportunity, innovation, and choice. This agenda is built around five bills that will restore competition in the online economy. The American Innovation and Choice Act prohibits discriminatory conduct by dominant platforms, including a prohibition on self-preferencing and picking winners or losers online. The Platform Competition and Opportunity Act prohibits acquisition of competitive threats by dominant platforms, as well as acquisition that expand or entrench the market power of online platforms. The Ending Platform Monopolies Act eliminates the ability of dominant platforms to leverage their control uh, across multiple business lines to self-preference and disadvantage competitors in ways that undermine free and fair competition. The Access Act promotes competition online by lowering barriers to entry and switching costs for businesses and consumers through interoperability and data portability requirements. And finally, the Merger Filing Fee Modernization Act updates filing fees for mergers for the first time in two decades to ensure that the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission have the resources they need to aggressively enforce the antitrust laws. 
Republicans and Democrats don't agree on much these days, but we agree on the need to take down these unregulated big tech monopolies. I've been proud to lead this effort for the last two years, and I'm excited at our next steps on this important journey. I want to thank Chairman Nadler for his support. But I just want to take a moment to say that we would not be here today without the support of so many men and women on both sides of the aisle. We're showing that bipartisanship is still possible in this day and age. Today, we are going to hold big tech accountable, level the playing field, and get our economy moving again. And to talk more about that work, I'm delighted to welcome to the podium my friend, my partner in this effort, the ranking member of the Antitrust Subcommittee, Congressman Ken Buck from Colorado. If you asked me a year ago if I thought I would be here, I would have uh, answered yes to that question. I want to thank my colleagues for working in a very serious way to address the problem of, of big tech's monopoly power. The bills we introduced last Friday are the culmination of an 18 month long bipartisan investigation into the monopoly power of big tech. Throughout the investigation, we heard firsthand of the gross abuses that Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google engaged in using their market dominant positions. Big tech has routinely used their gatekeeper power to crush competitors, harm innovation, distort, destroy the free market, and silence conservatives. This legislation represents a scalpel, not a chainsaw, to deal with the most important aspects of antitrust reform. We are giving the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission the tools they need to restore the free market, incentivize innovation, and give small businesses a fair shot against big tech oligarchs like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg. For my conservative friends concerned about big tech's power over information and speech, the only way to stop this power is through antitrust reform. These bills address that power. We will support small businesses. We will support consumers. And we will break up big tech. I want to thank Chairman Nadler and Mr. Cicilline for your leadership over the past 18 months. I look forward to passing these bills with you to end big tech monopolies in our digital economy. With that, I would like to introduce um, this guy. Thank you, Ranking Member Buck, and thank you, Chair Mussolini and uh, Chairman Nadler, for your tremendous leadership, and to all of my bipartisan colleagues who are here today, this is a big moment, I think, for many of us. Um, I'm proud to be Vice Chair of the Antitrust Subcommittee, but also someone who represents a congressional district that has long been a global pioneer, innovator, and leader in technology. Before I talk about our historic, necessary, and bipartisan legislation, I just want to remind you of three moments that helped set the stage for this particular bill that I am introducing. First, July 16, 2019, I asked Amazon's Associate General Counsel about the tech giant's use of third-party seller data to create products that compete with sellers on their platform. Under oath, he said, we do not use any of that specific seller data in creating our own private brand products to compete with businesses on Amazon's platform. But nearly a year later, the Wall Street Journal published an investigation that showed that to be a lie. Amazon has been using data from its own independent sellers, small businesses across America, to launch competing products. In fact, a former Amazon employee told our committee that it was, quote, a candy shop where everyone can have access to anything they want. When it comes to using seller data, and in July, I asked Jeff Bezos about this anti-competitive practice, and he did not deny it. That brings me to a second moment, which occurred on the same day. I expressed to Sula Pichai the deep urgency we feel to protect independent journalism. We already knew that Google makes most of its revenue by selling advertising. But what became clear is that the tech giant has full control of the ad market. Put another way, Google is running the marketplace while also acting on the buy side and the sell side all at the same time. That's not only a major conflict of interest, it's also a monopolistic practice with no regulation. It hurts the free press, it hurts small businesses, and it hurts competition. And that takes us to Facebook. Beyond asking about the tech giant's practice of copying, acquiring, and killing rivals, I asked about the work that Facebook is doing to address the hate speech on its platform. Zuckerberg essentially said the company is too big. 
What was clear then is that the heart of today's legislation, these unregulated tech giants have become too big to care and too powerful to even put people over profit. So now, this is the moment where, in a bipartisan way, we are introducing legislation that allows Congress to regulate these marketplaces so no companies have a platform so dominant that they are monopolies. Not only is self-regulation by big tech patently ineffective, it also comes at the direct expense of consumers, small businesses, local communities, the free press, and workers. So the Ending Platform Monopolies Act is a structural solution to a structural problem. It eliminates the conflicts of interest that arise from a dominant platform's ownership and reach across multiple business lines. And it ends the dominant platform's ability to leverage its control to disadvantage of competition. It makes it unlawful for a dominant online platform to simultaneously own another line of business when that dual ownership creates a conflict of interest. And it requires dominant platforms to divest lines of business where the platform's gatekeeper power allows it to favor its own services or disadvantage. I am so excited that we have this moment to reassert the power of Congress with landmark bipartisan bills to rein in anti-competitive behavior, prevent monopolistic practices, and restore fairness and competition, all while leveling the playing field and allowing innovation to thrive. And now, we are turning it to Mr. Owen. Oh, Mr. Owen. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. 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 In early 2000, I worked at Nextel as a corporate account rep here in Iraq. Uh, no one owned their phone numbers at the time, but we could not take out the air from one carrier to the other. Thanks to the Telecommunication Act, consumers took control over their phone numbers, communication, and data. Americans should always be able to seamlessly transfer the data from one platform to the other. It's something we take for granted today. We want to buy phones, we need about price, coverage, and service, not the package to take out data with, with us or not. The Access Act allows portability and interoperability, which basically says that the power that Big Tech has over our consumer data, we now should be able to now decide who can use it for what is being used. And I look forward to this uh, this control as we did back in 2000 is coming out to uh, help us in this here in 2020. morning. It's a very serious subject, but uh, let's first say I thought I was the most fashionable member of the college of the National Education. I stayed correct. I have my morning boots. I stand soon. Uh, I want to say first and foremost thank you to Chairman Cicilline and to my colleague from Colorado, uh, Ranking Member Buck. Uh, this is how congressional oversight should work. Done on a bipartisan basis to solve a consequential challenge that faces our country and our society. I'm so grateful for his leadership, for Chairman Cicilline's leadership, and of course, the Chairman of our full committee, Chairman Nadler, as we bring forward this bipartisan package, a package of bills that will truly benefit American consumers, American innovation, and ultimately a stronger online economy. In my district, I represent Colorado's second district. We are home to a healthy startup and entrepreneurship hub, a thriving, competitive, Environment promotes Colorado ingenuity and renewable energy and, and virtual platforms and countless other fields. However, in the wake of such opportunity in Colorado and elsewhere, the growing concentration of monopoly power in big tech is a salient threat. Congress has a vital role to play in ensuring that ultimately markets are working in a way that benefits consumers, benefits small businesses, innovation, and ultimately our democracy. This legislative action is a critical and historic step in that process. Now, before I came to Congress, I was a former regulator who led Colorado's enforcement agency for consumer protection for many years, the state counterpart to the SEC, the FTC. And given that experience, I know how critical it is for our enforcement agencies to have the necessary resources and the tools to do their job. Addressing anti-competitive behavior and investing in antitrust enforcement will expand opportunities for consumers, for workers, and for small businesses to ensure that we are safeguarding market competition and the innovation at the heart of the American economy. And that is why uh, today, uh, or last week, as part of this legislative package, uh, we 
we introduced the Merger Filing Fee Modernization Act with my colleague from Senator Sparks, who uh, will speak in a moment. Bipartisan legislation that will update merger filing fees for the first time, as Chairman Cicilline said, in over two decades, ensuring that parties to larger mergers pay their fair share and consumers don't have to foot the bill. This is a bill, I should uh, mention, that has already passed the United States Senate. It's a bill that we can get to President Biden desperate his signature and we intend to do everything that we can to make that happen. With that, I want to introduce my colleague here. I'm sort of grateful for uh, the opportunity to partner with her on this effort. Ms. Parks. Just that, but it was a unanimous and supportive and judiciary committee that said this. It's very good. Um, but um, we all know that free enterprise, competition, and economic freedom are essential to our political freedoms. And I might not agree with all of the bills uh, in this package, and I don't. I might not agree uh, why we have the not the problems, or the not the problems, but we do have this problem. Not just in big fat, elsewhere, hospital monopoly, EBA monopoly, we create a country with all the godways of, and all the guards running the country. It's very unhealthy, and it's bad for the middle class and for the people. So I appreciate to have a deliberation and debate on these issues, and we should vigorously debate policy solutions, but that's what Congress should be about debate, deliberation, developing great policies that benefit for the people. And I look forward to this debate. And sometimes it may be a lot of society, very vibrant, but I still appreciate for doing that. And my colleagues, it's a very tough issue. It's very difficult. You, you know, if you do nothing, you, you know, you don't have enemies. You start doing something, someone doesn't like you. That's why we have lots of problems now in politics. But we have to be brave and strong and serve the people. And I think American, American people ex expect it from us. So thank you. How are you? I thank all my colleagues um, for all their work on this, um, uh, particularly the uh, chair and ranking member and the chair of the committee. Um, I'm happy to be standing here. And I'll take a page out of my uh, colleague's playbook when she said, reference the fact that we don't all agree on every one of these bills. But I take to heart when I hear someone who came from a part of the world in Eastern Europe that understands oligarchs and understands oligopolies and understands some of the problems you get with corporate cronyism and empowerment of corporations over people. We saw last year, and we have varying opinions about the why and the how, but we saw last year Amazon make about a hundred billion dollars in additional revenue with a hundred thousand small businesses, over a hundred thousand small businesses across the country closing down. I mean, this ought to be a wake-up call for all of us to make sure that the backbone of our economy, small businesses, entrepreneurs, free enterprises, we understand it as Americans, is alive and well and strong, uh, and make sure that we've got the right structures in place to be able to preserve and protect that. Like, I've had a Gmail account for almost 20 years, right? I mean, I use Amazon, I'm happy to have stuff shipped to my house. Uh, all of us do. I don't use Facebook, my wife does. I see pictures that she puts in front of me, it's Facebook. But uh, the reality is these companies have massive amounts of power and massive amounts of information on consumers and people. And as people that should be committed to civil liberties and that, and that we should be protecting civil liberties, we should all be, on a bipartisan basis, working to ensure we're protecting small businesses, people, their data, and empowering uh, the free market to work and not allow some of these large corporations to step all over that. So I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of some of the bills, but importantly, I'm proud to have this conversation, to be able to work together and figure out where we're gonna go. It's complicated, right? We're in the middle of the results of the information age, and now we're, we're dealing with that, and we should deal with it together. So I appreciate and applaud everybody for their working papers. Thank you. Thank you, so I have final speaker comments. Yeah. Thanks so much, Chairman Cicilline, for your tremendous leadership uh, on this very important issue, and to ranking member, Buck, I thank you as well for your leadership and for the collaboration uh, in a bipartisan way that is on display uh, here today. It's incredibly important to make sure uh, that we continue to support the innovation economy, and we do. But for the innovation economy to flourish, uh, we have to make sure that small businesses uh, and tech entrepreneurs and startup com companies have every single opportunity to compete 
to allow the free market to flourish. I'm proud to uh, be the lead Democrat on uh, the Platform Competition and Opportunity Act, which will shift the burden which currently exists and is misplaced uh, because currently it requires uh, the FTC to demonstrate that a proposed acquisition or merger is unlawful, which is almost impossible to do. As opposed for the dominant platform company to demonstrate that the proposed merger or acquisition is lawful, which is what we will require when this legislation is able to make it over the finish line. The innovation economy is important to us here in America. We will continue to lead the way as we've done. It will be part of America winning the 21st century. But the free market, a properly functioning market, has always been central to our success. And there are abuses uh, which need to be reined in. It's time to end the era of buy or bury. Uh, it's time to end the era of copy, kill, or acquire. It's time to allow the free market to so. uh, Happy to take a few questions, Ken and I. I'll give the difficult ones you can. <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, how significant is it to have some of the most progressive members, some of the most conservative members in these parts at times? How, how significant is it to have all of you together behind them? Well, I'll say, first of all, uh, you know, it, it's about leadership, and I want to just acknowledge again the incredible leadership of Ken Buck, who had, and, and all the members of the subcommittee, and all the members who are here who have taken this issue seriously, who were part of a very intensive examination of the digital marketplace who really devoted the time during the 16 months to understand this marketplace. And when we, I think when we began this work, we didn't have the solutions. Uh, we had a general sense of what the problem was. I think the investigation confirmed the market dominance and the absence of competition in the digital marketplace. And I think everyone recognizes whatever your political views are, this is not good for the economy. It's not good for consumers. We heard from hundreds of small businesses what the impact of this kind of market dominance means for them. For innovators and entrepreneurs that are trying to start up companies. So I think it's a reflection of this serious moment that we're in and a commitment to solve it in a responsible way. And uh, I'm grateful that, that you know, we, we come at it from different directions politically, but I think there's a real consensus about what the problem is, what the power of these monopoly companies means uh, for job growth and for innovation and for consumers. Uh, and so I think it it's should be a sign to everyone that we're taking this work seriously in ten days. I think this is a starting point. And I had the pleasure uh, of uh, seeing Senator Grassi for a few moments yesterday. And the Senate uh, is also starting. And there will be more bills uh, coming through the House. There will be more bills coming through the Senate. There will be amendments to bills offered in the House. Um, what I'm so impressed with with this effort is we've been through a very tumultuous time in the last few years. And we're able to put our differences aside and focus on something that's really important to America. And, and I'm very proud to uh, be part of that effort. Uh, and I'm very proud that a lot of my Republican colleagues are taking this very seriously. I think you're going to see more Republican support as uh, folks understand the issue more. Uh, a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, before we met in, in Boulder uh, for one of the uh, field hearings, I was very much a market person. I looked at this and said, the market will take care of this. At some point, Amazon will start fading and, and other companies will rise and, and the marketplace can handle this. When I look at the conduct that is involved with these actors, I am convinced that we need to do something beyond just let the market uh, take care of this stuff. It will take, it will take care of this stuff, but it'll be 10 or 15 years down the road and you just don't have that time in an international economy <coughs> to let China catch up to us and, and to let other bad actors uh, take advantage of that situation. So I believe these are great bills, and, and I believe we should move forward on these bills. And uh, I really think that, um, uh, you know, my governor, Jared Polis, and I uh, offered 10 or 12 bills uh, a year together, uh, jointly, uh, 
So a lot of countries have, well, Australia has implement has their legislation is forcing big tech companies like Google and Facebook to pay publishers for news, and of course this has become a big thing. I'm wondering if there's any appetite for that uh, with these sets of bills. Is that something you guys are looking at? Well, we, we have the general competition preservation act that comes from up in Ivy where working on some revisions to that, but I think that's another example of the enormous power of these platforms to essentially collect this, uh, these news stories, use them without compensation to the producers of that content, and it's led to devastating consequences for local readers, local newspapers, local broadcasters. So we have a measure that's attempting to address them in the short term, but it's just one more reflection of the incredible market dominance of these firms that essentially dictate terms of how they're going to use content from newspapers. So um, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to work on that. I think we're not, that bill's not part of this uh, set of bills, but it, we recognize it's a serious problem because unlike kind of the sale of widgets, this is about the ability to access trustworthy, reliable news, which is so essential to the function of our democracy. When we look at the number of local newspapers that are going out of business, laying people off because they can't compete because all their content's being taken and they're not, and the ad revenues are going to the platforms, it's a broken model that's resulting in a real demise of local news which has implications for our democracy. So the first hearing we had in this investigation was on this issue. So I, I hope that we will have a legislative solution to introduce in uh, the next suite of bills on this question. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, Lee, I wonder if you can talk about uh, the Khan a little bit. Uh, obviously, it's played a big role in the investigation that you're simply um, you know, going to be chairing the FTC uh, agency that you know, is going to be carrying out many of the functions that are covered in these bills. Um, talk a little bit about what you hope the FTC can accomplish um, under um, the Khan's leadership, um, particularly as you the I mean, you know, I think one of the things that had struck me, and I think so many others, is the, the level of inaction by the in antitrust enforcement agencies, both of the DOJ and the FTC. And by the way, that was Republican and Democratic administrations. There's there just wasn't robust uh, anti uh, antitrust enforcement. So um, what we, I think, see as our responsibility is to make sure these agencies are properly funded and that comes from the use of bills being so critical. Making sure they're staffed and led by people who are sufficiently creative and serious about this work. Uh, and to be certain that they have the tools necessary to be successful in their antitrust enforcement. And so that may require some revisions and modernizing our antitrust laws. So we have a legislative responsibility to uh, pass legislation that fixes the lack of competition in the marketplace statutorily. They have enforcement authority and responsibilities to litigate individual cases against individual companies. I look forward to working very closely with Chairwoman Khan and the FTC uh, when she's confirmed to that position. Uh, we work very closely with the department and the FTC in development of this first set of bills, uh, but I think we can expect a very different approach to this monopoly moment and the enormous market dominance of these technology firms uh, with the leading economy and the FTC. Do you expect the chairwoman to be take a more uh, aggressive approach tailored kind of to her experience on, on the subcommittee? Well, I would never presume to speak for her, but I'm very proud that she was a very key uh, part of the investigation report that we generated. And those, and those are yes. Um, do you intend these bills to apply to Microsoft or only the four companies that were the subject of the report? Um, you know, the, the, the legislation all and, and all of the bills uh, has a definition for covered platforms that requires it to be three uh, requirements. One, that it have uh, market cap of $600 million, that it have users above a certain number, and that it be a critical trading partner. And so that will be a determination that has to be made by the enforcement agencies as to whether or not Microsoft is a covered platform. But that standard is the same standard in all three, in all five pieces of legislation. I think we have time for a couple more. Yes? Um, I, I was hoping you could explain a little bit about the differences between the American Choice 
and innovation act and the Indian platforms act because it seems like two ways of getting at the same behavior. So are there different behaviors that they're meant to address and what's the legislative strategy for having kind of overlapping bills? Uh, well, you know, I, okay. Uh, so, so the, 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 the American Invention Choice Online Act is a bill which prohibits behavior which uh, favors your own goods and services. So it's intended to prohibit uh, anti-competitive behavior by platforms. And uh, the structural separation bill requires the separation of different lines of business where those conflicts and these dialogues might exist. Um, and the strategy of having multiple bills is, you know, this is a big area. There's a lot of issues that need attention. We're lucky to have champions in each of these areas that are leaders of both the Republican and Democratic side. And look, the reality is we're fighting enormous companies that have, you know, with tremendous economic power, comes tremendous political power. I think my friend Ken Buck refers to to the lobbying or the swamp of Washington. They're going to mobilize hard against these reforms because they don't want to change an ecosystem that is generating profits that are historic in the history of the world. They want to preserve all of this anti-competitive behavior because it's enriching them, it's creating tremendous wealth and tremendous market power. So it also is a strategy of diffusing some of that by having a bunch of champions rather than just one on each side and different bills. So that's part of it. Can we take one more? I, this is actually a question for Representative Bo. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> you mentioned, you know, you hinted that, that not everyone in the caucus on your side of the caucus, on, on the aisle will support these bills. And could you, could you just talk a little bit more about how you're going to try and convince them? And have you started having discussions with leadership, including ranking member Jim Jordan? Yes, I don't think uh, all Democrats will support these bills. I don't think all Republicans will support these bills. I think the, the critical piece uh, is that we see this as a starting point, and, and we are uh, open to making these bills better, um, both here and on the Senate side and, and then together. The, the, if we don't start somewhere, if we don't do something, this problem becomes much, much bigger. And I think that as we, uh, I have had discussions uh, with a lot of Republicans, and I will continue to have discussions with a lot of Republicans. I think what uh, Congressman Spar said is absolutely true. The, the inertia that is that exists in Congress is at historic levels right now. You keep your head down. Uh, you can uh, avoid the uh, electioneering commercials that will come. They're trying to, to take a risk and do something good. Uh, a lot of us came here to do good and then get the heck out of here. And, and uh, I think that's the goal of, of many of us uh, that are getting on these bills. Um, we may not have a choice when we leave, uh, but the goal is to make sure that we do something worthwhile when we're here. And these bills are worthwhile. This, this is historic. This is an opportunity for Republicans and Democrats not only to work together, but to make a difference. And, and uh, too few times in the past, we have made a difference. Uh, often we take the can down the road um, this is something we can make a difference on. And I think um, as this settles in, more Republicans will uh, look at this as an opportunity uh, to uh, be part of something uh, that they can uh, tell their grandkids about uh, and the importance of what they do. Thank you, everyone.